Hey guys, it's Katie. And last night before bed, I was playing around with a couple of projects and kind of getting my creativity flowing. And so I made this, I've heard of it as a barbed cane or a flame cane. I made this last night. Um, I never really made it, but I kind of got some good inspiration off of this that I will be doing in the future. But what I did from this cane was I swirled it up into a lentil bead and then used it as my backing, if you can see here. Now, what I did was I took my concentric circle cane and I layered it over that and you could see the swirls through it, which I actually really like. I didn't know if I'd like it, but I actually really like it. And then over here, I layered on my two types of flowers. And this yellow one is uploading now, so hopefully it'll be up soon, maybe in 12 hours or so. This one here, I've already uploaded, so I took both of those flowers and kind of merged them together. And I really, really like the colors on it. So I decided that I will show you guys how to make this pendant. And this isn't sanded, they just came out of the oven. They're not sanded, they're not resined, nothing. And so that's how they look so far, and I actually really like it. So I like the contrasting color with the green to the yellow and the orange and pinks and stuff. So all I'm going to do is take some scrap clay. I have this from one of my flower canes. I just swirled it up and it's been sitting there waiting. So we're going to use this, I think. And that will be the backing for this part here. So all, all I did to get that to swirl was I rolled it into a ball. And basically we're making a lentil bead. So just roll it into a ball. This isn't really conditioned well, but it will work. And then you need to pick a part you like. I'm going to smush some of this translucent over. And we're going to make a lentil bead out of this. So find a part that you like the most. And I think it's that part there for me. Um, where's my acrylic block? I just had it last night. Don't you love not being able to find anything? Let me find my acrylic block. I'll be right back. It's clear, so... It's here. Okay, so here's an acrylic block. You can use anything flat. See through as best if you can. And you're just going to begin by going in one direction of a circle. And this will begin pulling the clay in that direction to swirl it. Now, if you look up lentil beads, you will have, there's some great, really detailed videos on lentil beads. Um, but really, I just do this with scrap clay a lot of times just to get my stuff swirling to get a cool pattern. And then generally, this is what I do with my scrap clay to make cabochons. If it's a cool scrap clay or end of end canes, um, makes really cool cabochons. So I'm just going to swirl that up a little bit. And it moves all over the place on you. Ooh, it's getting a little wonky shaped. That's okay. So swirl it up until you're happy with it. And I don't know where my bigger acrylic block is. I don't really know. It'd be easier if I was working on a b bigger one. And it's getting a little weird shape, but that's okay. It's still spiraling. And you can see both sides now. There's one side, and there's the other side. And that's about enough for a spiral, but I actually like this side better. So what I'll do now is flatten it down. Okay, and we're going to roll it out. And I'm going to roll it by hand. And you kind of want to think of what cutter you're going to be using to what size you need to roll it out on. And honestly, when I set my um, flowers on, I had two of these. So you could use two if you have two. You can see there's a piece of a flower from my end cane. But I don't... Eh. I have some scrap clay there that I can make another one out of and use that for my backing on both. Because as you can see here, I used 
the same color and you can't really see it much through the background here. Um, when I sand this, these will clear up the spaces that I don't have flowers. So you may see a little green through. Um, I was just going to use some green pearl, but I do have this from my cane. So I may swirl this up and use this by my flowers. But I'm worried that the pink will show through because my flowers are pink. So let me grab some other clay and we'll use that for the part behind our flowers. So these, this is just um, scrap clay that I used from my leaf the other day. And then this is some I used from my rose. So I'm just going to take this up. You could chop it. You could do whatever you want with it. And I'm just going to mash this up together. Just to get it a little bit more distributed. Okay. And then we'll roll that up in a ball. Oh, I have a hair touching me. And we're going to do the same thing. And this is going to go behind my flowers, so you won't really see it at all. But So I'm going to swirl this up. I'm going to try to keep this video short um, so I can post it while I'm at home because I don't go back to work until next week. So I'm going to do the same thing, and we'll use this. I can pause the video. So I've decided there's not enough color in here for me, even though most of it won't show. So out of this, I'm going to shave off some of this scrap. Why not? I have some white and translucent scrap that I'm going to throw in there. Might as well use it up, right? Um, from some of my translucent canes recently. You're going to have some white leftovers. Just want a little more variation in this than all that green there. So keep your scrap. You always need scrap. And then I have some bright green pearl. I have a little of that in there that I used the other day that I haven't put away yet. Put a little of that in there. I just want the swirls to have a little more coloring. And then I have some Cernet. This is a mix of hematite and then their greenish color. I forget what color it is, but I used this on my translucent leaf cane the other day. So let's get a little of that in there just to get some more color going on because that was a lot of green. There, that'll work. I'm going to take that and roll that back up in a ball. And none of this is really conditioned at all. There. That gives a little more variation. And then I'll start swirling this. So just pick a part and start swirling it. And we'll see what it looks like when we get done swirling. Now, if it's not swirling enough for you, just chop this up again and roll it back into a ball and start over if the colors are too blocky like this. So I may, I may just chop this back up to get this color smaller to get them to pull together a little better. So I'll just show it to you. I hate cutting stuff out because then people, if they're learning, they don't know what to do. You know, if you know what to do, then just skip through this and do it or watch it. I like watching the videos um, from start to finish. I don't mind watching something I know how to do because you actually may learn a tip that you really didn't know before. You thought you knew, but you, you learn a different way of doing it and it may be easier for you. You know what? I also have some dark blue that I'm that I used from this pendant. I also have some of that. Let's put some of that in there. Why not? And that pendant tutorial will be going up soon. I really like that pendant. See, here's an, another piece that came out in that same project tutorial. That was like a three for 
tutorial. Okay, that should be enough. So just take a bunch of your scrap clays and whatever tones you want and you can always make lentil beads out of them. Some of that was Kato, some of that was Cernet, some of that was Primo, some of that was Souffle. I use all different brands. The only ones I don't tend to use um, is Sculpey 3. <laughs> That's the only one I don't tend to use. I've got Fimo, Kato, Cernet. I tend to bake everything in my oven at 275 for about an hour unless I'm using Fimo and then I do 250 because it's got the lowest baking temperature but I'm, it's, I think it's 230 degrees Fahrenheit, but I usually mix the female with uh, Primo, so that's why I do 250. If I was just using ex female exclusively, then I would only do, um, I would do it at its baking temperature or whatever you were using. If you were just using Cernet, well, bake it at its temperature. But half the time I tend to mix the colors and the brands to whatever I want. So in my oven, I can bake everything and I've never, I've only once had things burn and it's because my fiance used, I have a toast, not a toaster oven, it's like a little mini, it's a convection oven really and it's just like a countertop convection oven because you can bake, broil, toast <clears throat> um, and it has a temperature and timer setting function and he turned it up and used it and I didn't even realize because he never uses it that's the only time I burned something and it wasn't because my thing spiked it was just because I really because I didn't check the temperature and I should have okay so we're starting to get some swirl in there I keep going weird shaped just want to start pulling the color a little bit more And remember, my flowers are going to be on top of this, so you really, really won't see this very much at all. But, and it's quite ugly, honestly, but it's rather than use, you can totally use some nice clay if you want, but on this type of project, rather than use nice clay, I'd rather use something that's not quite so nice. Because you won't really be seeing it. On this one now the one where we're going to stick this over you will see it but on this one you won't really see much you're just going to see a tint of color so I have them rolled out basically to the same thickness and you can run it through your pasta machine to get them to the same thickness if you'd like um, I'm just rolling them by hand okay so they're about the same thickness so, that's what we got here. And I'm also not going to back these, so the back is what you'll see, and they'll be setting next to each other here. So the first thing we need to do is also you need to decide on, um, it's a little thicker right there. You need to decide on your cutter shape just to make sure you have enough. And I, am, I do think I'm going to do this shape again, this oval cutter. It's a large oval here, so I think I'm going to use, I have to pick a portion that I want to use on this. Now, if I use this side, this could be my back. And if I use this side, I could use that right there. I'm not going to cut it out, I'm just going to indent so I know roughly where I need to put my cane slices. And on this one, I might use this part right here like that okay so now we need to begin laying our cane slices on here and I think the first one we'll do this is my circle cane I called it my concentric circle cane and it's a translucent cane and when it's baked it looks like this and I think it's a cool background and it's very it's not difficult to do that cane but it adds a lot of cool detail so I'm going to use that <clears throat> and so we're going to cut, cut slices off of that 
Now, cutting slices isn't always the easiest thing to do for anybody. Um, one thing, make sure your blade is sharp and make sure it's clean so that way it doesn't drag as much. The tissue was wet, so I should dry my blade off. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut some slices and try to keep them roughly the same thickness. And the thicker they are, the less you're going to see through. I wonder if I can just place that. I'm going to keep that aside because I may just use that on the tip there. <clears throat> and it's hard to get a beautiful slice every single time. I wish I had a Lucy Clay slicer, but I don't. That one's a little thick, for sure, on one side. Which is, if it's a little thick, I'm going to try to shave some off on this side. So, you know, we all do things like this. So don't beat yourself up if you do that. And if, right now, this camera is right in front of my face, so it's harder for me to cut this than it would be when I was doing it last night. I think out of that whole batch, I cut two weird, and right now I just cut a bunch weird on camera. Because I can't see what the heck I'm doing. So am I going to lay these ones sideways, or am I going to have them meet in the middle? Because it's a little too wide, so I'm going to have them meet like that. Trying to get them even. And I want to show you here. Now, these scraps that I just cut that are junk, if you roll them up with something, that's the kind of, and then swirl it, that's the kind of pattern you'll get there. I was just swirling up my excess from the veneer I made last night. I'm going slow, so I don't keep messing up my pieces. <coughs> Excuse me. This piece is super, super thin. Now you want them touching, but you don't want, if you can help it, you don't want them overlapping too much. I may take just a little piece of this white from this little thing. I might cut out just a little piece of this white, because this is going to be junked, that little piece. So just a little piece of white, and I'm going to try to just stick it in there so it doesn't show up so much. It's 
I'm going to stick that up there. Not that it will matter, but then I can marble it later. Okay. So these are a little thicker than I had intended, but oh well. For the sake of the video, that's what we're going to do. And then what we're going to need is a piece of parchment. So I, I reuse my parchment until it gets too dirty. And we're going to kind of squish this out and burnish this. So anywhere where it feels thicker, I'm trying to pull it in to a seam. To seal off all the seams. Okay. And then we're going to gently roll. And you want to roll from multiple directions. That way you don't push it exclusively one way and do this by hand because if you were to stick that sheet in the pasta machine you have no control over it so we're just trying to seam it all together thin it out a little bit and you got to remember when the translucent goes clear you'll be able to see better what's behind it Trying to make sure it's all level. Okay, so there is one part of our veneer that we have right here. <clears throat> it's another hot one again today, so. And yes, there's a couple little pieces of stuff on this, but when I sand it, it's just on the outer surface. So when I sand it, that won't matter too much. I think what I'm going to do is grab a piece of paper and just set that on. This is my little book that I've been writing my ideas on or in. So I'm just going to set that on a piece of paper and maybe I'll leach out a little clay from the back. And then on this one, <clears throat> we are going to start laying our flowers on them. So, usually I'll start with my biggest. So these are the two flowers I'm going to be using. This one's already posted on YouTube, and this one's posting right now. Let me see if I can get it to focus. But they're both really cool, and I think when they're together, they look great together. So we're going to start off with our largest size. Let me just see. Uploading big video. Okay, it's uploading. Um, so we'll start with the biggest one. And I'm going to start with the dark pink one and it's okay on this if you don't get whole slices that's totally fine and also you can use your messed up ends you know your cane ends you know what's cool about this is if you don't add a center this is what you get so this was my cane end here and I don't want to throw it away because I really like it I, I don't know I might do that flower eventually in different colors but without a center because I really liked that So again, the thinner you can make all of these, the better. The smaller ones are easier to cut evenly thin. So if, the, if one end is thicker than the other, I'll just pinch it. And then we're going to begin laying that roughly in that circle. That way we don't waste a bunch of cane. <clears throat> so my circle... So you guys can't see it and by doing it this way you're going to get two pendants out of one veneer essentially okay so that's my roughly a little wider than my cutter size now you don't need to use two different flower canes you can if you'd like um, you can just use one you can use more than two. So just have fun with any of your designs. 
I'm just trying to lay them on here randomly. And you don't need to go large, medium, small. You can do large, small, then go back to medium, and then go back to large. You know, just whatever looks good to you. This cane is still a little soft. So I just made it the other day. Yesterday, I think. Yeah, yesterday. I've been making a lot of canes for the 30-day cane challenge. And it's okay if a piece is cut off because we can set another flower right in there. Okay. And then I'll take my large fellow one. I think at this point I'm going to use this distorted cane end because it won't be showing as much once we overlap it. So I might as well use it up. You can cut it off, but why not use it? especially in something like this to where you're going to be covering a lot of it up. And so I'm just laying them on here. There's no real science to my madness. I'm just going for it. Use my nicer end. Now, wherever there is translucent is where either a flower behind it is going to show through, or um, the background will show through. Sorry, my eye itched. So, like on this one here right there that yellow flower behind it showing through because the translucent was there same with right there all of it showing through because the translucent is wrapping it you can see a line of translucent right there so it gives a really kind of layered effect and then i think i'll take my medium next take my medium yellow Now this video is already at 27 minutes, so I'm going to put a couple more down and then I'm going to pause it and complete this. So just go through your sizes, lay it on until you're happy, just kind of have fun with it. Play around. Just experiment. <clears throat> this is my medium pink one. Okay, so I'm just going to continue doing this and I'm going to go down to even my smaller sizes here and I'm going to keep laying them on until I think it looks good and then I'll be back when that's done. Okay, so this is what I have. And I even took some and cut them in half just to fill in the edges here. And now we're going to burnish this the same way we burnished the other one. Any thicker ones that you feel with your fingers, just give them a gentle pat down before I use my roller. And that way you can pull the petals in certain directions if you want. And then we'll gently use the roller coming from multiple directions. Very gently. I'm not pushing really hard here. Because I don't want to stretch anything too much. I just want to get rid of all the seams. There's a piece of my hair. This side's a little thicker than that side, so I'm going to try to even it off a little bit. Okay. And there's that one. I really like these colors together. I don't know. At first I wasn't planning on putting them together in the same project, but I actually really like it. 
So the next part is to cut out our shapes. So we're going to use this oval cutter, whatever cutter you want, and pick a spot that you like the best. Now, this camera is right in my face, so I'm trying to get over it. I think I'm going to go right there. And I don't usually get rid of these ends. I marble all those together at some point. That one didn't have a lot of excess, but... So there's that one. Let me try to pick this up without distorting it too much, but even if you do, it's okay, because we're going to be merging it with another one. I'm trying to get the little flimsy pieces off the outside. And we're probably going to recut this in a minute anyway, so... Don't freak out. So there's one. That would look awesome on its own, I think. Just like that. So eventually I'll probably make one like that. Let me get all this excess pieces off my blade. And then we need <clears throat> to cut the other one out. I'm going to leave it on that piece of paper. And keep that too. If you marble that, that looks that gives you a kind of a cool looking thing there. And I was the reason why I had it on some paper is I was really just trying to leach out some of the the backing on that. Okay. So next thing we need to do, this is going to move fairly quickly because you don't want them sticking together. So I would get your tile ready. Mine has a little schmutch on it from baking last night, so I'm just going to scrape that off of my blade. Okay. Now, you want to figure out which one has the stickiest back, and I think it's this one here. So I'm going to lay that down first, and we're going to lay this one on top of it, and then we're going to cut some out of it. Now, again, you want to move fairly quickly with this because you don't want them sticking together. But it's the easiest way to get two pieces to fit together. So let me get everything ready here. I'm gonna, don't push it down, just kind of just gently lay it on. Okay, I'm going to take it off for one quick second. I want to mention something. I've mentioned it in um, a different project tutorial, but I'm going to mention it again. Now, when you're cutting pieces in half like this and trying just to add an accent piece, you don't want the seam of the two parts to end where you're going to drill your hole or put your bail because you'll be more apt to separate the two pieces when you're drilling a hole. So put it off to the center, if that makes sense. I just wanted to say that before I cut. So I'm not going to cut straight down in the middle. I'm going to cut a little off center. and get them apart quickly. And it's okay if you distort them a little bit, like that. Okay, the next thing we need to do is start setting these back together. And this can definitely take a second, so try to line your ends up. Is that my cut end? Okay, and this one here. Is this my cut edge? See? And we're just laying them together. And then take your parchment 
and kind of smush them together without making your line go super wonky. But this is a great place to use like the translucent leaf cane I had to lay it along the seam here. I don't think I have any that I've done that with in front of me. I always wear my pendants when I make them. So now I'm just burnishing the two together gently. If you push too hard one way or another, this line is going to get all wobbly. So try to be kind of delicate with it. And that's why I tried to make sure both sheets were about the same height. But I'm going to be adding resin to these later. I always resin my projects. If you're wondering how I do that, I put a, I made a video of how I resin projects. And then we're going to burnish this one together as well. And we'll recut these in a minute. And a lot of times I put them on two separate tiles. I don't put them on the same tile. That piece of parchment had a bunch of wrinkles in it, so. Just trying to get these ends to merge. like that and then I gently usually take my roller and I'm just working on one of them right now even though it looks like I'm working on both I'm only actually working on one and I'm just gently rolling it Trying to get them both the same height. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure at all. Just a little bit. Okay. All right. That's what we got. And then I'm going to take my cutter and I'm going to see. cut it out. Now this edge is not long enough, so I'm going to pull my clay up a little bit. The cutter has enough to cut all through here, but then this it's a little shy, so I want it to be able to cut the another edge on the whole thing, so I'm just trying to pull up a little clay here to make it tall enough. excess off there so my shape looks good and this is a tile I plan on baking on so and before I pull the cutter off I'm gonna just scrape off this excess and like I said a lot of times I will put each half on a different tile so that way you have room to move and work it's too soft so it's not pulling off There's one, and then let me check the next one. See how it's a little shy up there? So that's what I was doing with the other one. I was taking my blade and stuff and just pulling some clay up to the top so I have enough to get a nice shape, a new shape. shapes perfectly symmetrical. This will also, you know, by stretching out your translucent design, it will also make you be able to see the background better when this goes clear. That should be about good. Cut that guy. Okay, and then take this excess off, 
and then we'll be able to bake these guys. And later I will sand and buff them with my Dremel and then I'll apply resin and drill a hole for my bale. I think it's a pretty cute, you know it even has a fall kind of look to it with the coloring. This will be a good fall one, a nice summer one, um, you know, depending on what colors you use in your flower design. So right there are two pendants, which will look very similar to these. <clears throat> so I'll get these in the oven. Because I have a bunch of, of mix of clay, I'm going to bake them at... I really don't have much Fimo in here. So I'm going to bake them at 275 for a full hour. I always bake longer than the recommended temperature just because if you watch like any polymer clay tutor videos uh, of strength tests, the longer you bake them, the stronger. That said, you don't want to bake it for four hours type thing. Just, you know, about an hour. Then with these pieces, I want to just quickly show you if there's any um, excess of this green. I'm just trying to get it off here. Let me just show you this real quick, what I do with this kind of stuff. I always do this in my videos. <laughs> my other project tutorial, did, I did the same thing. So just cut this up into sections. And you want to grab a little excess. So this is the excess of this veneer here that we just did today. Just take a little piece of that. Make a little ball. Actually, I want a little bit more. I want this to be a little bigger. Okay. And then, oop, then wrap this around it. Just wrap it right around. This you can do with your bad cuts, too. Okay. Roll that in a ball in your hand. Just smooth off all the seams. And we can create either a cabochon by using a silicone mold or a lentil bead with this. That part looks the best to me. So grab your tile and roll that a little bit. And this is how, even when I'm using a cabochon mold and when I'm using scraps, I swirl it like this first, and then I um, cut it in half and then put it in a, a mold to make a cabochon. Just to get it moving a little bit, get the clay moving a little bit, see? And then flatten it off. These make some really interesting, where's my, let me see if I don't drop all my stuff over here. I have one that's really cool looking with a very similar, see, that's using something just like this. So you can make some really awesome cabochons by using scrap. These are just a couple that I have nearby. Here's one here. That one's got a little resin on it. This one doesn't. This one doesn't. It's just buffed and polished. So you can make some really cool cabochons or beads with this. You know, just really think about your scraps because you can actually get some cool stuff out of your scraps. So I'm just flattening it off. And if I was going to put it in a cabochon mold, I would cut this in half this way and then I'd get two. Or um, if you're going to cut this out <clears throat> for a small pendant, you know, get it to the shape you want it. But that's a, a neat way to make just some interesting looking cabochons. Now always think about, especially if you're gonna sell these, it's not what you like, it's about what someone else likes, okay? And what you may not like, someone else totally may. So, you know, have fun with your projects, really just get out of the box. Yesterday I took two and I put them together like this. It looks kinda goofy, but you know. <laughs> Now I can practice different resins on that and different things on that. So I'm going to get these in the oven and I will be back when that is done. Okay, so now they are out of the oven. 
and I'm going to pop them off my tile here just by using a blade. Okay. So these are the ones we just made here and they have not been sanded or buffed. These are the ones I showed you earlier that I made last night and they've been sanded and buffed and you see how much that background cleared up. So this one's going to be a little more yellowy, it looks like. We'll see when we sand it. And then I took that scrap piece and I just cut a little piece, a little bead out of it. And I think it'll look pretty cool, just as a little, a little bead. So next thing we need to do is sand. Um, a lot of times I'll take it, like these other ones that I just sanded, that I made last night, I went outside and sanded them. It's nice out, I mean it's really hot out, so I didn't last long, but... I sand it out there and I use wet dry sandpaper and I start from 600 or 400 sorry I do four six eight one thousand fifteen hundred two thousand twenty five hundred and that's as high as I go because I'm using my Dremel after to buff and get this nice shine before I apply resin um, if you don't have a Dremel to buff I would go as high as you can I have sandpaper all the way up to 10,000 and in steps so I'm just gonna start with the 400 and I have a bowl of water off to the side here so I'm just gonna wet my sandpaper and sanding is pretty easy um, it's a pretty no-brainer thing turn on the TV listen to an audiobook just do something else while you're doing it go sit outside and begin sanding and you want to sand your front and your backs because I'm using a Dremel I can trim up my sides later which I'll show you when I show you my Dremel so definitely take your time sand it up you know the 400 will get rid of any big large lumps and then the finer ones obviously are going to shine it up more um, going to 2500 I won't get that high of a shine on it but my Dremel will shine it the rest of the way so, and like I said, I'm going to add resin, but I still like to get them as shiny as I possibly can before I add the resin. And this will help, sanding will help clear up our um, translucent as much as possible. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to sand all three of these pieces, fronts and backs, um, all the way up to 2500. And I will be back when that's done and I'll show you how I buff them with my Dremel. Okay, so I have all of them sanded up to 2500, and then two of them I have buffed with my Dremel, and I've buffed the backs as well. I actually like the back one on this. Looks kind of interesting. So this one is just sanded, this one is buffed and sanded, and you can see what a difference buffing does for that. And I will be applying resin later, but I just wanted to show you. So I'm going to use my Dremel. It's a Dremel 4000. It's a refurbished one that I got off of Amazon. I've had it for about three years. I'm not saying that refurbished ones can last that long or will that last that long. I have no clue. Um, it was just cheaper, and that's what I got. Um, it has a lock button here, and that's how you open and close the chuck to put your bit in. It has an on-off switch, and then it has speeds. When I'm buffing, I'm generally around speed 15. In my How to Polish Polymer Clay video, I sh uh, put the link to these that I got off of Amazon. I start with the orange one because it's slightly more coarse. At a higher speed with a little more pressure, you can also trim off these jaggedy edges here. So I'll do my edges, then I'll do my top, and then I'll switch over to my finer one, and that gives me an even higher shine. Um, on this one, I did have a little negative space there, and I... If you can see it on the side, I use this little toothbrush just to get the dust out from that little hole. But once I fill that in with resin, you won't really see it. So I am going to buff this on camera so you can see what I'm going to do. And um, it will get kind of loud for a second, but you can turn your volume down if you'd like. And one thing when you're doing the edges, you do want to choke right up on it and use your thumb to pull towards you. Now, if you're going to go, you know, 
towards the point, you can definitely catch them. So you'll you'll figure it out when you have things with points on them. Um, you want to come off the edge like this, not like this, because it'll ring right off of it. But you'll you'll play with it and figure it out. These, even when they're spinning, they're not going to hurt you because they're fluffy. So here we go. I'm going to do my edges first, and then I'll do the front. I did the back already. This is hard to do on camera because it, I wouldn't hold it like this normally. Or I wouldn't hold it over my desk. It's too long to hold over my desk. Just making sure my shape's good. And then I'm going to lightly go over it just to buff my edges. the side that's fine it may um fling your pendant if you don't have a good hold on it whatever especially at the higher speeds you could sand to try to get this nice of a shine but it would take you much longer and it's a lot more work on the hands this really doesn't it's a little weight to it, but it's a lot faster, I find, than sanding all the way up to 10,000, and you probably won't get as nice of a shine, even going all the way up to 10,000. So that's with the first one, it gets a nice shine, and then the second one will even get a higher shine, this fluffy one. And I've been using these, this, the link I put comes with a pack of a bunch, like 20 or 30 of each, but I've been using these for months. I have one that I use Renaissance Wax on for my backs. Um, this one's a clean one though, so I'm going to do this one now. Okay, so that's it done. And um, all buffed up there. Now, you could add a side if you want and put a side on these. You could also put a backing. Um, I'm not going to. These are going to be for myself and my family and things like that. So I'm not going to put a backing on them. Um, you know, but this is these tutorials are mainly to give you ideas of ways you can make jewelry. Now, our coloring on here, you know, was definitely had some yellow in it, and that's kind of what's showing up. Now, on camera, I didn't cut these as thin as I did yesterday, last night, off camera, so you can see more of the swirling in them. And today, you can see it, but not quite as much, because I cut them a little thicker. But they still are pretty cool looking. 
So, you know, just depending on how thin you cut them and what you use for a backing, you're going to get, this is more grayer, you're going to get a different look. So I will resin these off camera and then I will show you them when I'm done. Um, you don't need to watch me resin them. I have a tutorial on resining and for the sake of the video and uploading it, I'm not going to do it on camera. But those were the parts I actually wanted to show you. So I will come back and show you when they're all resined and completed. And um, then you can see the final, final product of these canes put together. You know, so check out this cane. That's on my um, YouTube, so just if you click my name below, Katie Gordon, and then go to videos, you'll see that one's on there. Um, these two are on my video list as well that I've made. So check those out, and um, you can make this, this pendant or something like this with that. I mean, you can do all kinds of designs. On this one, I just layered them right on top. Um, on this one, I did the same kind of thing. So you can do all kinds of things with this this similar design. Okay, so I finished a couple of these pendants off. Now, the other day in How I Resin, my How I Resin tutorial, UV resin, um, I showed how I did my resining, and I also showed two types of resin I use. My main resin, which you're gonna see on these two here, is the Decor Rom UV hard resin. I get this off of Amazon for 200 grams. It's fairly cheap, okay? And that gave me this. Now they're really it's a, it's a pretty decent resin. What I was going to show you the difference between because a lot of people like this Easy Dome by RJ Crafts. It works well. Instead of 4 minutes to cure, it takes 30 minutes. I was going to see if the white would look any more clear and a little less yellow not much the white looks about the same okay I think um, so that's that's that part but the easy dome is super thin super 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 thin and it takes 30 minutes to cure so for some reason I haven't used the easy dome in a long time and I forgot how thin it was this is one I did with the easy dome and it came out fine. I didn't get any drips. But these first two I did, I forgot how thin it was. And I got it pooling over. Now this one is just a little bit hanging off the back. But the front actually looks fine. So this one's an easy fix. This one's got all this wrinkling. So I think what I'm going to do is post another video showing how I would fix this. Or try to salvage this pendant here. So, um... Keep an eye out for that because if I do it, I'll post it and I'll show you how I'd salvage it. Right now I have three that aren't bad at all. So whether I fix this one soon or not will be my, if I want to or not. Um, but that's the thing about the, the RJ Crafts. It's a lot thinner and it's summertime right now and I think it's even thinner than what I'm used to when I used it in the winter time. Um, but I like the, and it's a lot more expensive, and you can only order it from RJ Crafts. So, I like the Decor Rom UV hard resin that I get off of Amazon. But anyways, I've drilled some holes on these guys with just a hand drill going from my smallest size to my largest size. I put in a jump ring, and then I put on a little bale on that one, and this one. Oops. these two. The other two I'll finish. That was just what I did last night to get the swirling back here. And I think I'm going to take this and make some type of um, flower from this basic tutorial. But anyways, I hope this pendant tutorial was helpful for you guys. Um, I hope it gave you inspiration for future projects that you can do and different ways you can layer things and different ways to use translucent canes. Um, yeah, I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you have any questions, please post them below. Um, please share and like, comment. Um, 
you know, trying to get more page or more people watching my videos to see if they're even worth worth posting. Um, if I'm up to 50 now, so yay, I'm up to I got half of 100. Um, so I'm trying to get more people to watch. Otherwise, you know, these videos take forever to make, and um, it's a lot easier to do it just on my own. And if if it's not helpful, then why make them? But I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope you like this tutorial. I think they're beautiful. I will see you with the next project.